Hello, everybody. Logic 11 has landed. Oh, wow, it's added. OK, I'm being slightly over the top because it's a slightly controversial release. Some people are very disappointed because they got an awful lot of something they didn't particularly want or expect. And other people are going, yeah, this is pretty good. Um, I've had a good look at it now. And there's some really interesting stuff in here. And there's ways of using this stuff you might not have thought of. And I'm going to tell you all about that in a minute. But first of all, with some important news, Let's join my friend outside the shed. Thank you, Guy. Yes, Door School, how to use logic is now available. And it's for people who want to produce music, not to learn every conceivable function of the whole piece of software. It's designed for people like you, who are either relatively new at uh, logic or moving <laughs> another door to logic or who've never really got on top of it um we asked in a poll last week which oh look be be good be good okay they're watching look everybody's watching you uh, okay door school is a truly wonderful way to learn software it's fun if you're as enthusiastic as my friend here about learning software check out door school back to guy in the shed <laughs> Charming and bonkers, and so is the dog. But look, let's dive into Logic 11, which we cover in the new Door School course. Um, so all the new features are covered uh, in, uh, in that course. Logic 11 comes with, um, here's the little list, uh, session bass player and keyboard player. This is the artificial intelligence which has divided the uh, Logic community. Um, um, so it makes up an accompaniment for you based on a chord track. Um, there's the global chord track, which you can use to control those instruments and others as well. But that's we're using the new pitch source parameter. Um, con you can control transposition. Um, there's a stem splitter, which is something which other um, they, they've been around for a while, and I'll show you how that works. Um, but this is uh, new to Logic. Uh, Chroma Glow, which is a really interesting plugin, and it sounds absolutely great. Um, then there's a whole load of other little bits and pieces, but basically the big stuff is the AI stuff. Um, it's artificial intelligence driving the, um, the new keyboard player and the bass player and the drummer and the chroma glow is artificial intelligence and the stem splitter is artificial intelligence. That's why quite a lot of this is quite uh, controversial. So look, here is um, Logic 11. Um, I have uh, a little project set up. Here's the Studio Grand. Um, now it claims um, that you can use these session players to prove to create professional nuanced performances that are in sync with each other. Okay, let's listen to the Studio Grand and see if we think it is uh, whatever that is, professional and nuanced. I'm sorry. Sunglasses of doubt go on. Um, that's for all the hype. That's quite disappointing. It sounds pretty mechanical. Is it better than a, a loop? Maybe a bit. I don't know. Um, it's probably n it's it's in exactly the same ballpark as uh, Cubase's um, chord track um, um, facility, which is had for a while. It's. Look, if you're a guitarist and you can't play keyboard, this is a good option um, for getting your demo down. Um, if uh, you really have no keyboard skills and you want to get something going, then this is a good start. But for anybody who plays a keyboard um, at all, you haven't really got anything to gain from this. It does come with... Oh, no. There's also um, the... Uh, you get the... The, the drummer and the bassist. And if you put the whole thing together, you get lift music. Now, you do get some, you know, you get a lot of customization going on here. You can decide that the, you've got a whole load of different styles, broken chords, block chords, arpeggiated, simple. You've got, um, a, you know, the different kind of um, artificial intelligence um, drivers for this. You can increase the number of grace notes. You can uh, humanize, you know, there's, there's stuff you can do and you can um, choose 
quite a lot about whether the chord rhythm, you know, how complex it is, how much it follows, whether you're just using root position only. Uh, you can even click, you know, so look, there is stuff going on here which you can turn um, to your advantage, but frankly, left uh, by itself, it's a bit on the dull side. Um, the, the interesting thing, and this is where I want to draw your attention to something, um, the actual AI stuff going on is completely separate to the instrument. So what you've got is a perfectly decent uh, piano uh, plug-in, and, and likewise, and the bass, and the drums and all that kind of thing. That also means you can use it to drive other instruments. So you can, for example, create um, a, a keyboard uh, Studio Grand type thing, and then put strings in. Uh, so this is the same thing, but instead of um, instead of the keyboard, I put um, Spitfire chamber strings in, and you get this. I mean, you know, it's it's it. it it's a different use for it. Um, I've got the drummer and I put um, some damaged drums in here. So you got... I think, to be honest, I think people, if like me, you're already a keyboard player and all the rest of it, and you're thinking, what am I gonna do with this? You know, thanks Apple, you've spent millions of pounds on this and, and I really don't know what to do with it. it. The answer is that, I think, probably you'll end up abusing it rather than using it and you'll use it for in you know things it wasn't originally intended for. Now, <clears throat> this all is driven by the chord track up here, um, which was, somebody pointed out the other day, in a past version of um, Logic and has now come back. And what you get is, you know, chord progression, which you can go in there if you right click on that. If you say we don't want that A minor, uh, if you control click that uh, and you go and you uh, create chord. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to say, I find this fiddly um, bit of editing this. Um, so you edit chord, there you go. Um, and we go for uh, F major, for example, um, or F major. Seven, there we go. What's happening now? Let's play the whole thing back again. Etc. And so you can create your own chord progressions and it does this thing. Yeah. Okay? So look, that's that's the instrument. I mean the trouble is, the trouble is you know the, if you look on VI Control, there's a you know, list as long as your arm of things which you know, established Logic users would like to have seen in Logic 11, and then none of them are there. You know, it's, nobody said, Do you know, in my, what I really want more than anything else is an artificial intelligence keyboard player. And so there is a certain frustration amongst established Logic users because, you know, there's a lot of stuff in Logic which should have been fixed a long time ago and additional stuff which is not there. So I feel your pain. Okay, um, let's look at one, a couple of the other things because there is other good stuff going on in here. What about this, um, um, the stem splitter? Stem splitter is something which what essentially it does is it takes an audio file um, and breaks it down into, you've probably heard this before, you can you extract the vocals, the drums, the guitar, you know, into separate audio using artificial intelligence. It's been around for a while um, on other platforms. Um, Spectral Layers on Cubase does a good job. Um, this works fine. So here is, a, here is a track which I did for a film quite a long time ago um, called Fly Fishing and the director Tempt the, the movie with a whole load of famous um, tracks and then discovered it was massively more expensive than he expected to clear them. So I ended up as the composer <laughs> to write all these songs in the style of. And this is my in the style of Tom Jones. So let's, this is what the track sounds like. You know the things that drive me wild about you. Can't live without your tender loving. Whoa. Okay. Enough of that guy. Right, let us apply the stem split. Okay, so you control click stem splitter. Now you get a you don't get much choice to be absolutely honest. Um, it just says vocals, drums, bass, and other. So there's no controls as such, and you go yeah okay. 
and then it does it. And there they all are. Then if you, okay, let's sold them up one by one and then you can turn them off. You know Sounds the same, but. Whoa! Don't think that I it does a good job. Look, it does a good job. Um, and it's, um, you know, like all of these systems, there is a certain number of artifacts you're going to get in there. Um, and it's not always perfect. But what I find particularly funny, okay, if we look at what logic, I mean, what Apple think you're going to use this for or say you're going to use it for, uh, except, uh, extract stems from an audio region with stem splitter. Um, Use Stem Splitter to recover moments from demos or unfinished projects and use them as the basis for new ideas. Who are you kidding, Tim Cook? I mean, honestly, everybody knows what they're going to... The first thing they're going to do is take a Taylor Swift song and drop it in there. They're going to use... The, it's piracy. They're going to take, a, they'll take a, a drum beat off a famous rock track and things like that. Oh, aren't you, lad? Look, it, this, is, this is what this is all about. And for um, Apple to say, oh, no, no, it's all for you to use on your own material. Doesn't wash. Doesn't wash, Tim. If I had two layers of sunglasses of doubt, I'd have them on. Right. Um, but look, it works perfectly well. It sounds great. It's fine. Okay, let's <clears throat> let's go. Oh, has it got rid of the original? It has. That's interesting. Um, when it splits it out, it seems to remove the original. It does. Oh no, there it is. It's up there. Oh, silly on me. Okay, they're in a folder. Got it. Right. Okay, now let's um, <clears throat> another really interesting um, uh, thing, which is. Come along. Um, so let's unsplit them. There we go. Bam, 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 bam. Another of the artificial intelligence things, and this is uh, definitely works a bit better, um, is um, the um, mastering assistant. Um, what this is, AI mastering has been around for a while, um, and this is now built into Logic. Um, is it as good as a mastering engineer? No. Is it better than probably you or I could do on a Thursday afternoon when we're in a hurry? Yes. So it is actually dead useful. Um, what you do is you go to, you select the file, you go to the mix window, you go mastering assistant, uh, and then it has a little thing. It has to analyze the track, and then it decides it knows what's going on. And then you know the things that drive me wild about you. You've got, you know, you've got basic controls over. Um, the character of the sound, clean valve, you know, um, whether you got how much of the auto EQ you put in. You know the things that drive me wild about you. The dynamics, etc., etc. Don't think that I Look, it sounds could great. ever. Stop! Stop! You know. It sounds great, um, and. Um, it gives you control over the stereo width, the dynamics, and the EQ with really nice, easy buttons, you know, which even I could get on with, to be absolutely honest. The last thing I want to look at, um, which I think is potentially the thing which people, if like, you're like me and we already play keyboards and we're doing this, will end up using it most for, is this Chroma Glow thing, which is uh, a really interesting um, um, sort of... Well, let me just show you. Hang, ooh, hang on, let's get. Let me get this up. Here we go. Right, Chroma Glow. Turn it on. There. Okay. Look. Here's here's a um, here's a loop. Let's have that loop. And turn it on. So you've got, again, you've got quite a lot of, you've got a little bit of control over the style of the sound, whether you want it colourful or clean, etc, etc. It's a sort of distortion compression plugin, I mean, it, but it it's great. It's great. And for adding that kind of free sort of difference to something, it's really, really, really good. And I would, you know, I think uh, a lot of people will end up using that more than... And the, uh, this, the other bits of twaddle. <laughs> okay. So look, 
Logic 11, okay, here's some you know, things to bear in mind. It's completely free. It's a free upgrade. So it's not like you're missing out on something. You're getting extra stuff for nothing. Um, and that is unlike other um, developers um, who charge for their upgrades, obviously. Um, is it what established users were dreaming of? No, uh, but that's because when Apple produce software, they're doing it to sell hardware. That's the only reason they do it. And all this AI stuff only works on Silicon Macs. So if you're on an old um, Intel MacBook Pro, in order to get these lovely new things, you're gonna have to buy an M1, M2, M3, M4 Mac. And that's the whole point. So that's why AI is right behind this, to sell more Macs. Um, it's, you know, but logic remains um, an incredibly powerful door. Regardless of what you think of all this stuff, it is one of the leaders of the pack and it is a real, you know, um, top professional choice, whether you're writing songs, producing music, writing film scores, whatever. Um, and that's why we, you know, the second in our edition in our door school series is how to use logic. And um, we will, um, you know, show you everything you need to know, whether you're a brand new user, um, whether you're moving from one door to another, or you've never really got to grips with it and you need a bit of help. Door School is here. It's focused on musical output, not bells and whistles and things like that. And it's available right now. And here is the trailer. Fush! Hello everybody and welcome to Door School. The key thing when you're getting to know a door is that you probably want to get making music straight away. Yep. So that's kind of the idea of what we're doing here. We're cutting through all of the extensive yeah. <laughs> things that you <laughs> I can get. I mean, I feel like I learn something new on my door every yeah. time yeah. I start a new project. But nobody uses 100% of the door because everybody has a different style of working and everything Absolutely. else. So don't feel when you see all these kind of massive menus and preferences and everything, you need to understand all of them. You don't, you just need to be able to make music. Absolutely. Quantize our audio oh, using the specs time. Okay. So let's do it on eighth notes. Oh, no way, it pulls all of those transients onto the beats and. Yeah, it does. That's amazing. There are quizzes, there are interactive videos. Minus ones are sort of like half finished bits of work, which we're going to ask you to do something to. It gets over the problem of having a blank sheet of paper. It's a quick way of accelerating your learning. There's tasks which will be, if you want to achieve this, here's a list of the things you need to do. It's like a recipe. Mm. And if you can follow a recipe and make beans on toast. Beans on toast that's recipe. A very, that's a very simple recipe. <laughs> that's, about, that's about my limit. So as you have different complexities and intensities set on your three different session players, we're going to choose to follow the drum kit instead. So do you see the groove like altered slightly mm -hmm. there? We should get the bass locking in with the drum groove a bit more. One of my favourite things about this chord track function is that it's an excellent way to learn music harmony. It's a listening tool, but also go like, okay, so next time I write something, I can think about how this works. 90% of mixing is staying organised. The visual aspect of that is just as important. So being able to very clearly see which ones are my vocal tracks, which are my guitar track, and the colours really help with that. Mixers who are first getting started, they will start with everything at zero, but they'll be pushing stuff up to find the balance, when actually pulling stuff down is the way you want to go. Having stuff low isn't a problem. Mm -hmm. 